This is part B in the practical transfusion medicine for internal medicine residents rotating through the hematology ward and consult rotations at the University of Alberta Hospital in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. This is Dr. Wall from the Division of Hematopathology. So in part A, uh, we talked about general blood product utilization and uh, what products are available in the blood bank. And we also touched on uh, IVIG. Part B, uh, we will start on a type and screen and cross match and then move on from there. So let's talk about the type and screen. So when you order a transfusion of a blood product for your patient, let's say red cells, um, what testing do you need to request before the blood bank is able to issue compatible uh, products for, to your patient? Well, the most basic testing uh, that is required is what we call a type and screen. These uh, two are done concurrently by the uh, analyzer in the blood bank. And so while the blood type actually takes only five minutes and the screen takes 30 minutes because the machine does them both together, at the same time, the total testing time required is about 30 minutes. So what exactly uh, do we mean when we talk about blood type? Well, that is talking about the uh, status of your uh, red cell antigen expression. So to ensure your patient gets the uh, ABO compatible blood type, we need to find out what their red cells express in terms of their A and B antigen status. So there are four major blood groups. Uh, group O individuals have neither A nor B antigens on their red cells. Group A individuals have only A antigen on their red cells. Group B antigens uh, are only expressed on uh, individuals with uh, blood type B. And then the last blood group is AB in which the uh, A and B antigens are co-expressed on the uh, red cell surface. RHD uh, antigen status refers uh, to whether your red cells are D antigen positive or negative. And that is also commonly known as RH positive or negative. Altogether, uh, the ABO RHD status determination takes only five minutes. So uh, the reason why we want to give uh, ABO compatible blood to your patient is that receiving an ABO incompatible transfusion can be potentially fatal. And that is because everyone, uh, in addition to having uh, the ABO antigen system on their red cells, will also have antibodies in their plasma against uh, the red cell antigens on their red, uh, the red cell antigens that are not on their own red cells. So, for example, I am blood group O. So, by definition, my plasma has a naturally occurring anti A and anti B uh, in my plasma. So, for example, if I receive a non group O red cell transfusion, then my naturally occurring antibodies will automatically bound, bind onto those foreign red cells and induce an intravascular hemolytic event, which can be fatal. So what I was talking about is forward testing of your uh, patient sample uh, red cells to determine A, B, and O and RHD antigen status, and then the patient's plasma uh, undergoes what we call reverse testing to uh, determine uh, whether it has anti-A, anti-B, or both. Uh, and your forward results should be concordant with your reverse uh, grouping results. So as another example, if you're blood group A on forward testing, because your red cells have A antigen on them, then your reverse testing on the plasma should uh, show the presence of anti-B. So th that was, those are the naturally occurring um, ABO and uh, antibody systems. So there are many, many, many other red cell antigens present on the red cell membrane surface, but uh, those antigens uh, if you need to form an antibody against them, uh, will require prior exposure to foreign red cells uh, by either transfusion and or pregnancy. So the purpose of the antibody screen, which is done on the patient's plasma, is to pick up these non-naturally occurring non-ABO red cell antibodies. So one of the classic examples will be if you are Rh negative, so your red cells do not have D antigen on them, but for some reason, you were exposed to RHD positive red cells by either pregnancy and or prior transfusion. Your immune system recognizes the D antigen on those foreign cells are not your own, 
so it will mount the anti-D, uh, antibody response against it. And so uh, in the future, you uh, can no longer be exposed to the, uh, the D foreign red cell antigen. So the antibody screen um, is used to detect non-ABO red cell antibodies only forming after uh, transfusion and or pregnancy to foreign red cell antigens that are not your own and the antibody screen takes 30 minutes. Now let's talk about what is a cross match. So after the type and screen is complete, so for example the forward grouping, reverse grouping, they're concordant and my antibody screen is done and it is negative and my testing results show that I am O positive with a negative antibody screen, then what happens then? The blood bank tech then goes to the uh, fridge in the blood bank to retrieve the appropriate uh, product for me. So for example, if my physician ordered two units of red cells and my um, blood group testing uh, says I am O positive, antibody screen negative, then the tech will go to the fridge to retrieve two units that are labeled by Canadian Blood Services as being O positive and bring them back to the bench. Now at the bench, a cross match needs to occur to ensure uh, compatibility between the type and screen and the product that is retrieved from the fridge. And the cross match can occur in two ways. The first uh, way is the computer assisted electronic cross match in which if my antibody screen is currently negative, meaning that my plasma does not have um, a non-ABO red cell antibody in them, then uh, I am eligible for the electronic cross match provided that a, a history check in the blood bank information system also shows I have never formed a, a previous red cell antibody uh, for which we need to order. So the tech scans in the two O positive red cell units retrieved from the fridge. The computer reads the barcodes on these two units, verifies that these two units are indeed O positive, and then the software program then compares the scanned results on the CBS barcodes on the units against my actual type and screen results. And if everything matches, everything is concordant, then the, uh, each unit is then uh, issued a paper tag with my uh, personal demographic information on it along with the unit's uh, information, blood type, and unit number, and then uh, the units are issued out, and that is the computer-assisted electronic cross-match. Now, I am not eligible for the computer-assisted electronic cross-match if my antibody screen actually picks up that I have a non-ABO red cell antibody, for example, an anti-Big D. So in that case, um, we cannot directly go to the fridge to pull out the units and do the cross-match. We actually do have to take a step back, work out why the antibody screen is positive, so basically we need to identify the culprit antibody or antibodies uh, in the plasma and then we need to uh, work out uh, what blood products to actually give to ensure compatibility. So on the blood bank requisition um, in the Edmonton zone, uh, the patient demographic uh, information is placed up here and then the uh, specimen collected for the type and screen and cross matches the purple top EDTA peripheral blood specimen on which the patient demographic information must match identically to those on the requisition. For uh, the purpose of transfusion medicine testing, a blood bank identification number or BBIN number is also assigned to that patient and that number goes on the requisition, the specimen tube, as well as the patient's uh, BBIN band and all that information must match exactly. Otherwise, there is a risk of giving ABO incompatible blood uh, leading to a fatality. And if there is a mismatch on any of this information on the specimen tube, the requisition, etc., then the specimen received by the blood bank is rejected and the uh, unit or ward is called to request for a repeat collection. So to summarize, to issue blood products, a type and screen needs to be done first. Then the uh, product is pulled from the inventory and then cross-matched by either the electronic cross-match or the full serologic cross-match to ensure compatibility before the product is actually tagged up and issued out of the blood bank for the patient. So for example, I was talking about if my antibody screen is actually positive, then we need to work out exactly what the culprit antibody or antibodies are, and that is called antibody investigation to identify to the antibody specificity. 
after which to ensure compatibility, um, a serologic cross-match then needs to be done in which my plasma is physically mixed with aliquots from, uh, uh, from, from the red cell units that we want to transfuse to ensure that there is no hemolytic reaction or red cell clumping reaction uh, by mixing my plasma against the red cells we want to transfuse. And if there is no such reaction noted, then those products pulled from the inventory are serologic cross-match compatible, then they are then issued out of the blood bank. Of course, a serologic cross-match, because it involves physical mixing of the specimens and additional processing steps, is more labor-intensive and more time-consuming versus the electronic computer-assisted cross-match we were talking about before. So, if the product is issued without the ABORH type being done, or the ABORH type is done, for example, the patient is known to be A positive, but the antibody screen is still pending, or the, anti the ABORH type is done, A positive, the screen is done, for example, the screen is negative, but the electronic cross match has not yet been done, and then the blood product is issued out of the blood bank. If the product is issued without any of these steps being completed, then the product by definition is uncross-matched. So for example, if you have a trauma patient in the trauma bay who is massively bleeding, the blood bank received the specimen to do the ABORH type on, and five minutes has elapsed, and we know the patient is A positive, but the antibody screen is still uh, cooking because it hasn't been 30 minutes yet. But then clinically speaking, the patient cannot wait for the screen result to be uh, finalized before blood is issued. We can actually issue group-specific A-positive red cells to the patient, but because the antibody screen result is not yet done, the A-positive blood that we issued out is actually also uncross-matched. Of course, the uh, testing will still be completed by the blood bank, even though the product is issued as an emergency release. So what does a positive antibody screen, practically speaking? So because we need to work out uh, the antibody specificity or specificities by doing the antibody investigation, there is going to be a time delay in issuing out red cells for the patient. Because we also need to find compatible units by performing a serologic cross-match. So therefore, if the situation is life-threatening, just as that trauma patient we were speaking about before, uncross-matched red cells may be issued while the testing is being completed by the blood bank. And uncross-matched red cells usually takes about 10 minutes to issue. And uncross-matched match red cells in the trauma setting in which the blood bank, for example, has not even had time to work out the ABO group or the type and screen specimen is still en route to the blood bank and we have not done the actual testing, uncross-matched red cells in that setting by definition must be group O so that it is compatible regardless of whether your patient uh, is group A, group B, group AB, etc. Depending on inventory purposes, uh, the uncrossed match red cells may be RH negative or RH positive. So what about for future red cell transfusions? So once the antibody screen is positive, for example, for a clinically significant antibody that can cause a delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction or elicit a hemolytic disease of the newborn or fetus, for example, uh, the uh, big D antigen, once you have formed that antibody, uh, then all future red cell units must, of course, be negative for that antigen um, to be able to be uh, compatible for your patient because the patient has the corresponding antibody in the plasma. And because your immune uh, response is only triggered by re-exposure to the foreign red cell antigen, if you never see the D antigen again, uh, even though you have you have uh, formed the anti-D before, your future antibody screens can become negative on future testing. So that is why we also uh, do the history check on the blood bank information system to make sure even though the antibody screen is currently negative, there is no history of a clinically significant red cell antibody that we must honor for the current transfusion by doing a serologic cross match. So let's move on to an approach to um, 